A very warm welcome to this World Game Changers podcast, where your host, Paul D. Lowe, embraces many crucial conversations that compassionately contribute towards creating a better life and world. Paul's intention is very simple, to help get people's inspirational insights and motivational messages out into the world so others may benefit. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to this World Game Changers podcast episode. A returning guest, Rebecca Wheel, and previously we spoke about the importance of torch. And you may recall that within that, we kind of left it, it finished where we said, well, okay, the importance of touch externally, how we touch people's lives, how we may touch them physically, is one thing. But how about the importance of touch to ourselves? I've kind of done that backwards, Rebecca. I forgot to say welcome. I've maybe not touched your life by welcoming you. (laughs) no worries no worries thank you so the importance of torch to ourselves Mm. let's 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 prod and poke this one where where, where do we go with this yeah I, i i reckon you know um i mean we are all uh living this world as us and you know we can we can touch other people's lives and we can help other people, um, but maybe there's a tendency to to kind of let go, you know, um, leave ourselves to the side sometimes, or um, um, you know, uh, forget ourselves sometimes in the process. And I think that it's um, arguably more the most important thing is to touch our own lives so that we're able to be in the um in the space to be able to to help others what are your thoughts on on that this is the old oxygen mass situation isn't it you know listeners how many times have you heard or been on a plane where you've been told you know in the event of an emergency (coughs) excuse me in the event of an emergency you put your own mask on first and you know i've lost count particularly from mothers the times i've heard no my kids come first my kids come first and i think that's a great reflection of human nature how generally you know there's a lot of stuff out there about how selfish we are how ego driven we are etc etc i don't know if i agree with that personally because certainly from my experience yes is that fear driven reaction of what do i do and i need to look after myself But generally, I believe that humanity, and I've come to know that humanity is a beautiful species, is Mm. a beautiful species that does put others first. Mm. And of Mm. course, there are very stark exceptions to to that uh, belief, that uh, experience. So I think it is a question of the, you know, the the old oxygen mask. Put your own, put your Mm. own mask on first, because... Surely without you being the very, very, very best version of yourself, you've got nothing to give. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because um, there's also a, an equivalent kind of metaphor that I, I experienced in my life when um, I was learning to lifeguard. And when you jump in the pool to, to, to rescue someone, if that person's flailing about and they're kicking and they're going to cause, you know, the the potential for, for you also to kind of go down with them. They actually teach you to, you know, to go to 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 push away from them at a certain point if they're going to also bring you down. Mm. So I think that's an interesting concept because I think that a lot of people, you know, we, we're all wanting to help others. And on the whole, you know, it's a really good point that for the majority of humanity, you know, we just want to, we just want to help um, and we, we want to love and, you know, connect. And, um, uh, but yeah, I think that perhaps there's a train of thought that you can get too caught in that and, and you've got to be careful to protect your own self because, you know, we can get caught into other people's dramas or, uh, you know, what, what, what's going on in their lives and, and it can affect us. And then in turn, then it affects our abilities to be able to, show up and be there because we're then affected by that so Mm. an interesting one 
It is an interesting one. And, and as Rebecca was speaking there, listeners, what came across to me, what was flying through my mind is, and this is certainly something that Rebecca and I have spoken about uh, off air, is this, it brings in this subject of dependency, uh, independence, codependence, and all this kind of stuff. Because I think it's fair to say, um, well, I, I, I'll speak what my own perception, and, uh, you know, obviously, Rebecca, you do with this, you know, it'll land with you where it lands with you. But this whole thing around how we need to be, you know, this self-love, we need to be totally independent, etc., etc., etc. And I think when we touch our own lives first, which is, you know, absolutely that, you know, that paramount need for us to be the best version so we can give something. But I think there's also a caveat on that for me that don't become too independent because then we kind of going into the six human needs models. We are on the side of significance rather than love and connection. Maybe mm. it's a thin line. Any thoughts around this whole subject? And we're kind of flying off. But that's a beautiful conversation like this. It could take you where it takes you. Any thought around this kind of dependence, interdependence, mm. independence sort mm. of model? I feel like with that, um, you know, with the independence it, it it will depend on the place in which it's coming from because if it's a feeling of you know oh i'm not uh if, if the place in which it's coming from is a place of lack so oh, i'm not capable to do this or i'm not able to you know so i must you know be this independent and prove you know that i can stay strong by myself and you know if that's the place in which it's coming from then there is uh then there's, you know, that that you, uh, you need to have a look at that and, because that's actually, yeah, a pla- coming from a place of lack, whereas if it's coming from a place of of love, of, you know, um, of abundance, of, you know, I, I don't actually need to, to have others because I feel good in myself and I feel like, you know, um, I'm feeling enough within myself, which obviously, you know, there's that, can ebb and flow in our lives as well there's never kind of a place uh where we arrive to um i don't think that you know of 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 that feeling but so i guess it depends the place in which it is coming from Mm. yeah it is absolutely it's a great answer that it is where it's coming from and it's having that awareness to know where it's coming from isn't it you know, mm. rather than it being some theoretical fr- framework, is this serving me? The fact that, you know, um, and, and I'll concede this, listeners, you know, I welcome the day and the opportunities that life gives to be dependent with other people. Because as a social animal called a human being, I love that. There's a big difference between that where I'm totally, you know, I, um, reliant on somebody and, you know, the world controls my world. Because I think when people are really deeply connected, there's this beautiful dance of, you know, one one party might have a stronger attribute of X and the other one might have a stronger attribute of Y, whether this finances or emotions, or, it doesn't matter what it is. But there's this whole exchange in this vibrancy of dance that says, do you know what? Who's counting? Who's counting is how much in in our bank account? What's mine is yours. Who's counting how much is in our emotional bank account? Brackets our hearts. Because as you say, this ebb and flow of being a human, you know, we have good days, we have bad days, life is up, it's down, etc., etc. And Mm. I think there's that acceptance of this dance between us um, as as people, as humans, rather than this philosophical, no, I will be totally independent and I will be strong. And, you know, that's never going to happen to me again because of. Yeah. Yeah. So in a sense, it's a response to a previous experience, uh, a previous trauma, a previous, you know, wounding of some sort. Mm. Um, yeah. And that's where we tend to kind of store that negative trapped energy isn't it and you know Mm. make those kind of statements those um at the risk of sounding even slightly judgmental listeners those fear-driven statements right that's never going to happen to me again that you know the shutters are up the barriers are up Mm. um etc etc yeah and for me as well what kind of came to me just then is 
that brings in the element of trust because I think that when something like that has happened there's a mistrust in people that you kind of you know uh, understandably can can kind of that that kind of story can start to play out in your life of oh no don't trust people because this can happen or this has happened to me before you know subconsciously we can kind of have that train of thought and I think that you know trusting is such a key part uh, in this because um you know depending on other people um and all kind of you know um as you know, we've we've talked about before that we're, we're tribal people we are you know uh, we thrive in communities and so depending on others is actually uh arguably the thing the best thing for the for the for the the whole for the collective mm-hmm. uh, but that trust element is so important because if it's with you know if, if that connection with the people isn't you know um isn't quite there or there's uh there's not trust there then it's it's more uh it's a challenge but it also brings in this idea of like trusting to have trust you know if you trust someone then you receive trust um what are your thoughts on that i think at the risk of oversimplifying it you know it is it is about us first and foremost. You know, what, what space and energy are we living in? Because what you put out there is what you're going to get back. Mm. You know, some might call that karma. But essentially, the energy that we are is the people that we attract and the experiences that we attract. Mm. And that's why I, I personally, listeners, kind of unapologetically put out there that you know what's in my heart yeah and and some people might find that uncomfortable and you know but i always i i I heard something years and years ago that um i didn't really fully understand it and i'm going back a good few years and it was a it was a priest that said this to me and he said whatever you do in life it's always about your intention how other people receive it is up to them and i didn't get that but boy, do I get it now. And so, you know, the, the late, great Jim Rona, he coined the phrase, some will, some won't, so what? Mm. And I think all we can do is be true to, you know, to thine own self be true. Put it out there with, you know, whether it's a word or a deed or whatever it is, with good heart, good intention, how it lands with the recipient, uh, to quote a well-known bill, is none of my business. Mm. We let go of it. Because mm. we've done it from a good place in a good space, mm. it lands where it lands. Yeah, and then we're free as well, and we're kind of not attached to any expectations or any, you know, preconceived ideas of, of you know, um, and also that that also uh, means that we're not putting our value externally in other people's opinions and, and mm-hmm. judgments and. I mean, that's something I've really kind of, you know, uh, and still am in in many ways, kind of like, um, you know, uh, experiencing challenges with is that kind of that judgment and that, you know, caring what other people think. And Mm. um, uh, and yeah, it's it's um, a process, I guess. But it's it's um, just being true to yourself and just expressing that and and, um, expressing from from the heart is um Mm. you know so important and i I think it's so so inspirational as well for other people to to see that and because it it will create this kind of you know for anyone that is feeling like you know unable to express or or feeling that they are um struggling with that to see someone that is just fully doing that and fully kind of you know this is who i am and, and owning that and just being that that's such an inspiration for, for others and and um, creates that ripple effect of of uh, um, you know of love in a sense you know love of love for for people to kind of really love themselves and be true to themselves and um, it spreads it out wider into the mm. world mm, absolutely so there we have it and i tell you there's three words that's come to me there rebecca and i don't know why i don't know why and probably i don't know are they are they related in any way in any way i don't know but food for thought and it's called the naked truth 
Mm. The naked truth. Just wonder, listeners, what do those three simple words conjure up in your mind when you hear those words? The naked truth. And I want to leave it there. Rebecca, how can people reach out to you, find out more about you? Thank you. Okay, so the best place is my website. So it's rebeccawheel.com. And uh, yeah, I've got all my contact details on there, uh, email. I think I've got my phone number on there as well. So if anyone wants to reach out, um, I really would love to hear from you. So yeah, please do. Superb. So all that remains now, listeners, is for me to speak my naked truth and sign off by saying, remember, the world's changing. How will you respond? Thanks very much for listening to this World Game Changers podcast episode. Hopefully you found it interesting and helpful. Drop a line to paul at worldgamechangers.org with any thoughts or questions you may have, and he'll be more than happy to respond. Remember, the world is changing. How will you respond? <laughs>